Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today I want to do a more fulsome review of the Anna Griffin Empress Mini. If you caught my unboxing and first look video of the Mini, I mentioned that I would try to use this as my primary machine for a couple of weeks before coming to any sort of final um, conclusions on uh, what I thought of it and as well in that first look <laughs> in that first look video if you didn't catch it I one of the things that I mentioned was that I was surprised that the Anna Griffin embossing folder that comes with the machine is so much thinner than other standard embossing folders and I did try to do some embossing with a standard folder and I wasn't, uh, I couldn't really find a good result there, but I think I have found what works for me. So if you want to stay tuned, I, I will show you what I've been doing for embossing. And if all you're looking for is just my summary conclusion on what I think of the machine, I like it. Uh, I love it. In fact, I have been using it. Um, it's, I set it up right next to me. Um, my platinum machine is within arm's reach of me as well, but this is even closer to me and I have tried to exclusively use it the last, ever since I bought it really. So it's been, I think maybe two weeks now and it has pretty much uh, served maybe 90-95% of my needs because most dies will fit through this machine and I will talk about the kind of the specs of it and size of the plates and whatnot. The um, now that I've discovered like a plate combination that works for me for embossing it's covering my most of my embossing needs as well so really the only time that I have had to go to my platinum machine has been when I'm using something that is too big to fit through the opening of this machine and otherwise this has worked a charm so I want to also preface the rest of my opinion review the rest of this video to let you know like from what basis of comparison um, am I coming from so I have uh, the cuddle bug that was my six inch machine from there I went to the large platform platinum machine I I've had it since it was the that really nice lime green of fun stampers journey so I've got I've got you know one of the earlier kind of models uh when it was fun stampers journey but I think it's pretty much the same machine and from there I got the Gemini well I had the spellbinders prism uh as their mini machine but then I got the Gemini mini just to have something that I could take with me when I travel, um, that I can keep on my desk for just really quick, small things. And so I have the Gemini Mini. I still have my uh, prism somewhere, but Spellbinders stop supporting that. So because it's a system that has plates and consumables, I figure, well, they're if they're not going to um, continue that line, then that means they're not going to put out plates anymore. So uh, that's why I got the Gemini Mini. And then I also have the Gemini uh, large platform electronic die cutting machine. So that's, that's the framework that I'm working within. I have never used any of the Sizzix lines of machines. So I don't have the Sidekick. I don't have the Big Shot. I don't have the, um, the Switch. I, I don't have any, anything Sizzix. So cannot compare, uh, this to, uh, any of those, uh, machines. So that's where I'm coming from. That's sort of the framework that I'm working within. Uh, as I have been forming my opinion and my judgment. So overall, I'm really impressed with this machine. It is uh, an electric die cutting machine 
the footprint is pretty compact so it measures about seven seven and a half at the at the widest it would seem and four looks like it's about just shy maybe four and seven eighths tall around there and then about four and a quarter deep so um, the footprint is actually fairly fairly small so around seven and a half uh, by four and a quarter which actually maybe it's not a coincidence but that's the size of the plate actually so the plates are actually four and a quarter by seven and a half long these are the standard plates that come with the machine but you can get plates for your Empress Mini that go uh, to 10 inches instead of seven and a half. So if you use a lot of slimline dies like the long frames or cover plates or anything like that for slimline, there is a 10 inch long set of plates the full set the full stack and I'll, I'll tell you what the full stack is and there's also a 13 inch long so 13 inches would be an inch past my ruler so I can't like my ruler is 12 inches and it fits the screen um, so an inch past that so really I mean the 13 inch is really long I'm not sure why you would need it but they have it so there's that and then what do you get with the machine you get the machine itself the power cord is not permanently attached so you can take that out you have your full um, stack of plates so you have two a plates two a plates you have your b magnetic mat you can see i've been using it that's that's my <laughs> that's the plate that I've started. Um, you have the B magnetic mat, the C embossing uh, mat. So this is the, your tan squishy mat, and then D metal shim. So these are the five plates that make up a full set. And I think mostly your A plates are going to be your consumables. These are the ones that you'll have to kind of replace. Um, the rest should last you a good long time. You have your instructions. And then as well, you do get some goodies to start to craft with. I bought an extra set of plates. They come in a set of two. So I have that. And then there's a set of dies that uh, you can get started with. And as well, there's a 3D and a Griffin embossing folder to get you started crafting as well. So right out of the box, you've got some stuff uh, to work with and uh, experiment with as you get to know your machine. And that's that's what I did during my first look. But I don't actually have a lot of and I don't really have anything in a Griffin except for the fact that you know what I love about this machine um, the cuddle bug that I have is the Anna Griffin uh, is the Anna Griffin one and so it's the same colors <laughs> so my little Empress mini actually matches in color my cuddle bug <laughs> so the only thing that I have Anna Griffin is actually the dies that came because that was like a special edition cuddle bug that came with a bunch of Anna Griffin dies and I think like little border embossing folders so I think that's the only thing I have that's Anna Griffin but what I, but like I said I wanted to kind of put it through its paces with like my everyday crafting to see how it holds up and so that's what I've done so let me show you uh, if you're new to the machine, what or how to use it and what the plate combinations are for the various things. So die cutting. Now, this is something that I do, which I'll just show you, but you don't you don't 
have to do things uh, the way that I do them. I am gonna just position this this way. Um, in my in my craft area, it's actually right next to me, and and it is like this. Um, but I have a little bit more screen real estate if I actually show it to you like this, so that you can kind of see it, you know, coming in and then going out the other end more fully. And then my setup includes a stack of six by six paper pads. <laughs> I just counted this out. There's a, there's about nine, no wait, two, four, six, eight. There's ten, uh, varying degrees of um, full <laughs> six by six uh, paper pads. Any brand will do. <laughs> But the idea is that I have stacked these so that it just is like right, right under the opening. That's, that's how I came to this particular stack. And so that's there. And the reason why that's there is, let's see if that's distracting. I'll just do it in white there. Okay, so the reason why that's there is so that um, this will catch the plates as, as it's coming out. Because one of the nice things about having an electric die cutting machine is that it can um, allow you to go hands free while it's die cutting. You can maybe do uh, something else. I mean, it, it doesn't take too long to... Um, to go through and complete a pass, but it's enough time for you to maybe clean something up or grab a sheet of you know cardstock or do something. But if you don't get back to this in time, your plates will come out and then they'll just drop to the table. And I didn't want plates just dropping to the table. So I wanted them to land somewhere. And so that's what I've devised. The standard sandwich for die cutting is you want your A plate then you want your B magnetic mat I have the this die set that I just got during Black Friday and I detabbed one of them just to use as an example and so you want your die with the cutting side face up so die with cutting side face up, then you put your paper on top and you want to put your paper on top with whatever side you want to cut into that needs to touch your die because remember the cutting side is face up. Now I will admit this is the thing that took me the longest to get used to. I'm very used to cutting with the cut side face down. So I'm used to cutting. By the way, this magnet is pretty strong, so don't let um don't let it pinch your fingers. <laughs> but I'm used to doing something like this. And it's so easy then to see like, you know, to position your die on top of your paper. It holds it there and that's what that's what I'm used to doing. But I did read all of the instructions and the instructions say to do it this way. Um to put your cutting side up, your paper on top, and then a second A plate on top of that. So then I've gotten used to just kind of holding this tight a little bit <laughs> so that it doesn't slip and slide if you don't want to tape it, um, and then feed it through. So you have your complete sandwich is A plate, B mat, die cutting side face up, paper, second A plate. Now you do need to turn the machine on and it is different from the Gemini. If you are familiar with the Gemini, you can't just start putting this through and have it do something. It's, it's, it's not going to do anything. <laughs> um, the Gemini, there's some sort of sensor in the Gemini machine where it, once you feed it through far enough or it makes contact with something, I don't really know how it knows, but it knows and it will start to run. But this machine doesn't have that feature. What you have to do is press the run button and you can hear the motor going then you can feed it in and at some certain point it's going to recognize and it's going to keep going 
See how my stack of paper caught it, but it's still running. That's because it hasn't cleared the back of that. So you do have to still pull it out. Your machine's gonna keep on going, which is a reminder to come back and you know grab your <laughs> grab your um, die cut. But it does need to clear the 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 back of this completely to stop. Uh, and so once it comes out the other end, then you can see it die cuts beautifully. And there you have that. Now the thing that either I missed it, although I did read the instructions at least twice, maybe three times. Uh, I did not see anything about um, about the reverse button, so I want to mention that. The other thing I want to mention is I think these plates are going to last a good long time. I mean, the one thing with the Gemini is that it really chews up your plates. I've used this, as you can see, quite, quite a bit, and there's not really much, if any, bowing or warping, but... To keep it that way, uh, I've definitely tried to cut into like as you know many different um, areas as possible, and I look for areas that look like a little bit less scratched up. If you've, if you never die cut before, um, this this may look scary to you that you know you've taken a plate that was like pristine and clear, and now you've got all these scratches here but that's totally okay it's just plastic um, but what you want to make sure of is to just give it even wear and tear because if you're always cutting into like if your die is always in the center and you're always cutting into the center then it's always gonna put pressure here and and you'll see I'm gonna um, show embossing later and you'll you'll see what I mean the machine does apply quite a bit of pressure as it's rolling it through and it's going to have a tendency to want to curl your plates upwards and so if you're always die cutting in the same area and and in the same sort of ori uh, orientation of the plate let's say you always die cut with the a legible like this it's always going to bow your plates in the same direction but if you move your die around so that you're cutting into different areas on the plate if you're flipping your plate turning your plate this way and that way really exercising it in all ways then it's going to more evenly kind of apply the wear and tear of your plate and as pressure is being put through the machine, it's being applied to different in different ways across your plate. So instead of because where your die is with the paper is where the most pressure is getting placed. So if you're always putting pressure in the same place, it's always going to warp your plate in the same way. But if you move your die around so that it's cutting into different areas, then you're you're kind of putting pressure in different places and and it's going to evenly distribute how it uh, might kind of warp and bend your plate and then over time if you're doing that where you're consistently moving it around then it's just going to you know stay flat for longer so I'll just move this off to the corner here and I'll, uh, I've just felt this area, it feels less scratched up than <laughs> the rest so I'm gonna put my die there and then, now I was mentioning about the reverse button. So let's say I have this die here and I, I don't want to wait for it to go out all the way to the other end. It just needs to go in a little bit. It's a small die. It just needs to go in a little bit and then I'd prefer it just come right back out. Maybe that's faster. Or maybe it's a die that you think is pretty intricate and you want it to... Um, have a second pass through the rollers just to really make sure that it cuts all of the intricate details out. That Those are occasions where you may want to use the reverse feature. I, like I said, could have missed it, but I didn't see in the instruction manual how to do it. And um, there is a reverse button, but when I push it, I'll demonstrate it didn't do exactly what I expected. <laughs> 
So what do we do? We hit, first need to hit the run button to get it to run that way. So run, feed the plates through. I think it's gone through and then I hit reverse. Well, that just stopped things and I thought I broke my machine. <laughs> but reverse and hold. So you have to keep the reverse button down for it to feed it back out the um, the front. And if you hear a little cracking, it's totally okay. That that does happen. And this has definitely cut. Well, it cut through in one pass. But you can see um, that's how you use the reverse <laughs> function. Um, maybe it's somewhere in there, but... I, I had to discover that for myself <laughs> and after a slight moment of terror when um, just hitting the reverse button paused stopped everything so um, so that's your die cutting and um, you know going forward going back then if you want to do embossing I'm not going to do an example um, because I did that during my first look video, um, but the the machine I just had it here a second ago. The machine does come with an Anna Griffin embossing folder if you want to use that, and I'll I'll show you what the plate sandwich combination is just so that uh, maybe you have it as a frame of reference for comparison. Their recommended embossing sandwich is your A plate, the embossing folder with the material that you want to emboss inside, and then a second A plate. And that's it. Pretty easy. So your two A cutting plates and your embossing folder and you're good to go. As I mentioned um, in my first look video, the Anna Griffin embossing folder is pretty thin, even compared to, and it's a 3D one, even compared to the standard embossing folders that I'm used to, um, not even like a 3D one, it's, it's thin compared to that even. So this is the Spellbinders. This is a standard embossing folder nice plaid and it is thicker than the Anna Griffin folder and then I have the Sizzix 3D embossing folder and this is way way thicker than both Anna Griffin folder on top Sizzix 3D embossing folder in the middle, Spellbinders regular standard embossing. This is Anna Griffin 3D, they say, which I'm skeptical of. So anyhow, um, I think I mentioned that in my in my first look video, so I won't go over that again. Um, so I'm going to set aside the Anna Griffin folder. We're going to do the Spellbinders folder first. So... Don't do this if you're worried about voiding your warranty on your machine. <laughs> so uh, I'm only sharing what I have discovered. I'm not making any sorts of claims or recommendations that anyone do this. I did play around with a couple different things. I mentioned in a live stream with, uh, it was one of my Crafty Fun live streams, Tracy and I think it was the episode with Tracy and Meg. I mentioned embossing with um, the metal shim and I showed what it did to my metal shim and it was like, uh, this is my metal shim now. But when I showed it on that episode, it was very curled because as I mentioned, when you're passing stuff through, it's going to have a tendency to curl. It has so much pressure that it's going to have the tendency to curl things upwards. And you'll see that in a moment. But I don't recommend that. I have found something that if you want to give it a try, this might be a little bit more friendly to your plates. So we're going to do the Spellbinders um, standard embossing folder. And I've got my A plate 
my embossing folder. I've got, uh, let's try, this is 80 pound cardstock. Okay. Then B magnetic mat. So not a second A plate, a B magnetic mat. And then two sheets of 120 cardstock shim. So the full combination is A plate, emboss standard embossing folder, Spellbinders is what I'm using, with the material inside, happens to be 80 pound uh, cover weight cardstock, B magnetic mat, two sheets of 120 cover weight. And keep in mind the the folder is wider than your plates. So you want to line up your plates and your cardstock shims so that it actually covers the paper that's inside of the embossing <laughs> folder to get a really nice edge-to-edge uh, -edge emboss. So there's my plates. That's my sandwich. Run and then let it go. See how this is this is curling up. So that's what it's gonna that's what it's doing to your plates. It's just your plates are a thicker plastic material, but the, it's still trying to do this to your plates. So when you like flip and turn your plates, it's going to, you know, if it went through like this one time and it's curled that way, the next time cut it on that side and then it'll curl the opposite way and that will keep it straight over time. So here is, there is the emboss. This is a standard emboss. Pretty good, right? That's pretty good depth. I mean, you're not gonna get super, like, a lot of dimension because this is just a standard folder, but that's, I think, pretty good for um, a 2D, like, a standard folder. So then, uh, so I'll just go over that again. We can do it one more time just so that you can see. Let me do it with slightly thicker. This is 100 cover as opposed to 80. So you want to start your sandwich off with a plate, embossing folder with material, B magnetic mat, two cardstock shims that are 120 cover. And let that go. And so this is why I don't recommend using the metal shim because I used a metal shim instead of paper cardstock and my my metal shim did this. It was like that cur curved. <laughs> but you saw like it's I I just bent it the other way. It's mostly straight now. So, but still I I still wouldn't recommend anyone do that because paper shims you can at least throw away after a while and it's just paper. So, here's there's that. Um, so really, really lovely. Pretty good. White's kind of hard to see. I think it's a little easier to see the emboss with black. Okay, so that is the standard, the standard folder. Now the 3D folder. So again, you know, kind of your mileage with these tips may vary just because of the um, papers that you want to emboss and the um, um, and every machine is also a little bit different too but here's what I have found to work with the Sizzix 3D embossing folder so this is a thicker folder than the standard but we're gonna start I'll do the same black card stock and so we'll do the standard. Um, we'll start with the A, the 3D embossing folder with 80 pound cardstock, 
and then just the two cardstock shims. See how it's curled this way already? I'm just going to flip that. <laughs> Not that it matters too much because it, this is just paper. But now I can run that through. So that's just A plate, um, the A cutting plate, the 3D embossing folder with 80 pound, and then two sheets of cardstock shim. And look at that. Isn't that, look at how much dimension there is. That's so cool. Okay, I'm gonna do that again. Uh, maybe with prettier cardstock. <laughs> like a nice pink. Okay, so this is... Uh, this is, I think, still 80 pound. This looks like maybe Sizzix paper or possibly... It's textured, so it's either Sizzix or Tonic. So the A cutting plate, 3D embossing folder from Sizzix with the material inside. And see how my paper is like very nearly straight? So <laughs> I'm, I'm even flipping my paper shims back and forth um, and it straightens them out over time. So then uh, that was two sheets of 120 cover weight. Oh, maybe this is, this might be a little thicker than 80 pound. Oops. Oh, maybe. Oh, I think I have it like right to the edge. I'm going to pull my paper out a little bit and we'll try this again. Okay, so. Oh, there we go. And. Look at that. I love this embossing folder. Doesn't that look like a real cable knit sweater? Doesn't that look like real fabric? It's so cool. So that is the 3D Sizzix embossing folder. So again, you know, do it if you're comfortable with possibly voiding your warranty because I did not, I kind of experimented to get to this sort of um, combination, plate combination for these folders. It's definitely not something that I read in the actual instruction manual. So I, you know, don't know that, you know, uh, I don't think it hurts your machine. Like I said, if, if, um, if, like you just saw, if it's too thick to go through for whatever reason, it's just not, it's not going to continue to try to force it. It's just going to stop. If it doesn't automatically reverse, you can just push and hold the reverse button to, to get it to roll back out. Don't, don't try to force it through. And, um, otherwise, like, I don't think it hurts your machine to just try try different things. So, um, but having said that, you know, if you don't feel comfortable being experimental with your machine, that totally makes sense, too. It's not super cheap. So, I get that. But if you are curious, you know, this is what I did. Um, a plate, 3D folder with material, plus, you know, two cardstock shims. And that was for that was for the three D folder. For the standard folder, it was a plate, the standard embossing folder with the material inside, the B plate, and also the two sheets of one twenty cover weight cardstock shims. So. These are these are the magic key. Two sheets of 120 cover weight shim, uh, cover weight 
papers. If you watched my um, Crafty 101 on paper, you'll, uh, you may recall that a 100 pound cover might vary from paper to paper. So this is Accent Opaque 120 pound cover. And so you might need to adjust this if you use a different paper stock, but that's that's roughly you know what um, that gives you a very precise idea of what I'm working with. It's accent opaque 120 cover, and it is the key to getting all of the embossing to work. So um, 3D folder is just the A plate with the folder and the two cardstock shims. Standard embossing folder, at least for Sizzix, is A plate, um, the folder B plate, and then the two cardstock shims. And the results, I feel, are pretty good. Um, and so that's definitely... Look at that. I mean, that's definitely going to cover pretty much most all of my embossing needs except for because I do get the Spellbinders 3D embossing folder club and these Spellbinders uh, embossing folders are the larger ones those won't fit through the opening so that's really the only thing that um, you know I still need my platinum machine for because while this is a nice large opening relative to something like the Gemini Mini, um, you know, there are, it's not going to fit every single die. It's not going to fit every single embossing folder. So the opening on this, just to kind of summarize, recap everything, the opening on this is four and three quarters wide. The plates are four and a quarter wide by seven and a half long. And that happens to be the footprint of the machine itself. The machine itself is four and a quarter. I think that's really cute. I wonder if that's uh, that was intentional. Um, but the machine's footprint is four and a quarter by seven and a half as well. And the um, the machine does come with all of the plates that you need. So I can get that on camera completely. So there you can see the plates are pretty much the exact same size as the machine. Um, you get your two cutting plates, your B plate, your squishy mat, which is for, um, I'm not going to use that that often, I don't think. But some dies are designed to be able to give you some deboss or emboss detailing, and that's when you would use that. And then your D metal shim, which you can use to maybe apply extra pressure if you need. And so that's something that um, could be useful for maybe really intricate dies, for example. And so there's occasions where you would want to maybe use that, but I wouldn't recommend it for the embossing folders because I've tried it and it's not, <laughs> it's, it's not, these two paper shims work a lot better and then you don't completely warp your uh, metal shim. So that's a really nice um, size because being four and a quarter wide, you can fit your A2 panel onto the cutting plate and that gives you the ability to maybe cut an aperture into a full panel if that's what you want it to do. Um, this is an A2 panel, for example, so you can see it fits uh, perfectly. The Because the opening is four and three quarters wide, I definitely, it's a small little detail, but I definitely appreciate the fact that, you know, you have, you have like a good, you know, half inch wiggle room. So it's not hard to get, you know, to get this into um, the opening. So if you have, you know, any sort of dexterity issues or anything like that, it's, it's, it's not a very snug fit. It's pretty comfortable on either side. And as well, it also gives you the ability if you needed to, let's say you were die cutting an aperture into an A2 uh, frame or panel. Um, and if you wanted to run your die at an angle, for example, you could 
tilt your panel just a little bit and cheat it a little bit so that it's a little bit angled. And that way you can still run your um, run this through the machine because you have a quarter of an inch on both sides. Um, because the mouth, the opening is four and three quarters, but the plate is four and one quarter. So that's kind of nice. Um, by comparison, the Gemini Mini is three and a quarter wide as opposed to four and three quarters. And the plates, uh, it works on a folder system, but this is the embossing uh, plate for it. It's three and one eighth. So that's the widest that you can cut is three, about three inches. And you can see there's only an eighth of an inch uh, wiggle room to get that through. It's, for me, not a big, huge deal, but maybe for some people it's that um, not having quite as much um, play where between the mouth and the size of the plates, maybe that can make it a little bit more difficult. Um, the plates also, you can get the full stack of plates in... Instead of seven and a half, they have a set in 10 inches if you do a lot of slimline. And that should cover because slimline is three and a half by eight and a half. So 10 inch uh, long plates are great. Gives you some extra, because uh, you don't want your dies going all the way to the edge, right? So 10 inches is great for that. There's even a, set, a full stack of plates that's 13 inches long, which is pretty long, but it allows you to just like line up a lot of dies in one go and I guess die cut everything at the same time. Um, but I don't have either of those. I think this, this is going to serve most all of my needs. I think I, since I've gotten this machine, I have not really had to reach for my platinum machine all too often. Just when I've been using those larger embossing folders and, um, and, and now that especially that I've found a plate combination that works for me with the smaller size folders, I've definitely been using this um, almost, I can almost use it exclusively. So my sort of, you know, uh, takeaway conclusion is that I really like this machine. It was, you know, a little bit spendy because it is an electric machine. So, um, you know, they, there's a lot of components and circuitry and all of that stuff, but I almost feel like if you are a beginner crafter just starting out, you don't have a machine at all, and you do mostly small projects like cards, similar to how the Cricut has the Maker and then it's got the Explorer line of machines, and then they introduce the Cricut Joy, which is a smaller footprint for folks who do smaller crafts, for folks who have smaller spaces. It was a really good option um, for those those um, crafters who, you know, have that, the, that kind of constraint in terms of space. For a, a lot of those same reasons, I think the Empress Mini is a good choice and even for experienced crafters, I do feel like uh, I'm able to use this for about 90% of my needs. So um, if you don't make projects where you have larger dies, um, and there aren't that many dies that are wider than an A2, uh, wider than four and a quarter. Uh, if you do mini albums though, that's one thing right off the top of my head. And bags and boxes, those dies tend to be larger. So, you know, you're going to be constrained by that. And as well, the Spellbinders line of embossing folders now are five and a half by eight and a half. So those won't fit through this. But pretty much everything else I've needed to die cut or emboss has fit through it. And so I feel like if you're just starting out and you don't do many of the other, um, you know, uh, crafts that I described that might have larger format, either dies or embossing folders, this might be all you need as die cutting machines go because it is electric. So a lot of, a lot of times, um, 
you know, that's something that's really nice because it's going to save your joints, your wrists, your arms, your shoulders over time because you're not like manually cranking um, the, the plates and the dies through your machine. So um, the electric option is, is pretty nice. <laughs> if you're like me and you like to kind of be very efficient with your time it's it's good for that too because as it's going through you can be doing something else you can be getting your next um you know dies ready you can be cleaning tidying up your area finding something whatever it is else that you need to do so it is kind of nice for that and i think um i mean i haven't had it long enough to be able to um have an opinion in terms of just long-term durability but I I think it's gonna hold up just fine and so I, I'm not I haven't heard of any concerns or anything in on that front and so I kind of feel like this could be like if I had known starting out and and if this was an option when I was starting out I think I think I would have been very happy to start with this machine if you can afford it because it is not the cheapest machine out there but it's going to last you like a good long time and maybe it might be the only thing you need if you don't mind, you know, uh, not using larger dies, larger embossing folders. So I think it's a really good uh, option. I'm very glad that I got it, even though I have, you know, multiple other machines. But um, but you do need power, though. So <laughs> so, you know, if you lose power um, and you but you still want to craft then, uh, which has happened sometimes in my area, we'll lose power just in the middle of the day and I can't, can't watch anything. I can't browse the internet. I can't do much of anything else, but I can always craft because you always can hand crank something through. <laughs> so there's that, like you do need power for it to run, but I think uh, all things aside, it's it's a really wonderful machine, and I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to use it as my primary machine. So that's my take on the Anna Griffin Empress Mini, and a couple tips with embossing folders. Again, you know, take those tips for what they are. Uh, they're just what I have discovered, but. Um, that's definitely not something that I read in any of the Anna Griffin materials that came with the machine. So um, proceed with caution on on that front. But uh, but I'm I'm gonna continue to use it. So far, it hasn't done anything to my machine. So knock on wood. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me on this one. I hope it was useful. If you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Bye.